today we are grooming a Russian Balonka puppy. His name is Bijou. Let's get busy. I am using I Groom Squalene Care shampoo on him. When I put shampoo on dogs who have coats that are supposed to drop, I put the shampoo on in the direction that I want the hair to grow, squeezing it onto the legs. Good boy. Being very careful not to get any shampoo in his eyes. You're so sweet. Look at you. You're beautiful. Look at that face, guys. Isn't he handsome? I am putting the conditioner on in the same manner that I put the shampoo on, working it downwards as I go training the hair to lie down, squeezing it onto the legs. It's important to rinse these dogs three times longer than you think you need to. You want to get every trace of conditioner and shampoo out of the coat so that they do not become itchy. I'm going to let this conditioner sit on for about five minutes, working it into the coat as I go. I use a good quality ear cleansing solution in the ears. I fill up each ear canal with the ear cleanser, rub the base of the ear, and allow the dog to shake his head. Then we wrap him up in a nice warm towel and go to the drying table. The standard of the breed says the coat is long, dense, thick, soft, and supple with well-developed undercoat. The coat forms large curls, preferred, or maybe very wavy. The head has a well-developed beard and mustache. Complete lack of a beard and mustache is a disqualification. The coat is never deliberately parted. The hair on the head may fall naturally or be held up with a small bow on the top of the head. Feet may be neatened. No other trimming of the coat is allowed. On the forequarters, the feet are small and round with arched, tight toes. On the hindquarters, the feet are a little smaller than the forefeet, oval shaped with arched, tight toes. So with this information, as it pertains to grooming, we're going to want to accentuate the feet in the way that the standard of the breed calls for without over trimming. We want the dog to retain its natural rustic look, but yet still be able to encourage the feet to look like the feet should. So to get the arched tight toes, we're going to need to make sure that the nails are short. Good boy. That's very good. That's nice, yes. I did not blow dry this dog. We're just using the dryer to accentuate the curls and to get him dry without brushing the coat. That being said, I think people often make the mistake when they are leaving the curls in their dog's coat to not properly brush and comb it. The way that you properly brush and comb a dog with a rustic natural look is to make sure before the bath that you can get a comb from one end of the dog to the other. 
while the dog is still very wet, comb the dog from one end of the body to the other before you allow it to dry to retain these curls. So what we're going to do at this point is put the dryer on him and scrunch him dry. I want him completely dry. He's still a little bit wet, but I don't want to brush out any curl. Still got his curl looking good. So now we're going to trim the pads of the feet. I'm going to use an Artero clipper set on a 30 blade. You can see his nice brown pads, just beautiful. Solid colored. I am going to use a small curved shear and a small curved chunker. The standard of the breed calls for the back feet to be oval shaped, so we have to bear that in mind as we go to trim. So I am going to brush the hair down. Anything that falls below the pad of the foot, I am going to trim, being very careful not to cut up into what you will see when the foot is on the floor. so that I can have more control over the overall shape when I'm finishing him. And again, not overdoing it and not trying to make it perfect intentionally. Which is very important when you're working on a rustic breed. So we will do this on all four feet. sweet. On the front foot, using my curved chunkers, I'm going to come straight up and down across the front of the foot because he's supposed to have nice upright toes, creating a round foot. The standard says the feet are small and round. So that is what we're trying to achieve with the trimming while still keeping it natural. Small and round. And natural. And upright. Details matter. Mm -hmm. 
you also want to be sure when you're trimming feet like this that you make sure the feet don't appear to be turning neither in nor out, but moving straight ahead. I'm turning my shears this way so I don't cut into the hair around the feet too much. back feet are slightly smaller than the forefeet, oval shaped with arch tight toes. When creating that oval, you want to be sure the toes are pointing forward. Coming straight up the front to create the upright toes. Taking it in a little on the sides to make them look smaller than the front feet. to take my curved chunkers backwards and just trim a tiny bit here so that the feet really kick up when the dog is moving. Also helps to enhance that oval. have my scissors laying flat on the table going around. Good boy. backwards with the shear and going up from the back pad towards the hock. The standard of the breed calls for the hocks to be strong, moderately ang angulated, medium in length. They are set moderately wide when viewed from the rear. So, we're just going to enhance this moderately wide when viewed from the rear idea by coming in with our chunkers and lightly taking just a tiny bit of hair out back here. As you can see, I was able to take out a little bit of this without it looking like it was done, which is the goal. With my scissors around the anus and just cut a tiny bit in here.
Brown dogs are typically very sensitive under the tail, so I do not like to take clippers under the tail at all. Because this will be a show dog, we are not going to trim his belly at all. Some people might prefer that on a pet, but with the show dog, we want to keep him nice and full on the underside. <laughs> He's so cute. The tail is of medium length, set at a moderate height, and curls over the back so the tip is close to the back. The tail is completely covered by coat. The tail may not be docked. A missing or docked tail is a disqualification. So when the tail is carried here, on some of these breeds with a high set tail, I may be tempted to take off some of this hair on the back end of the dog. But this breed is supposed to be a little bit longer in body and very rustic looking. So if I were going to have one of these of my own to enhance the tail being nice and upright, I would probably just miss some conditioner on show day and maybe a little bit of hairspray to hold this up, but I wouldn't trim it. Whereas on a Maltese or a Shih Tzu, I may trim some of that that's coming down. The only thing I'm going to trim is right around the anus keeping everything back here. If he ended up with too much hair coming off the back end, I might come up under with a um, thinning shear and just lay that on down if it were necessary, but I don't think it would be necessary. I would just simply pat it down where I needed it. No hair gets trimmed around the eyes on these guys. I like to use Show Premium Pet Grooming Products to keep the hair in place and encourage this part. So I'm just putting a slight little bit on this hair under his eyes and pushing it downwards to hold it where it needs to go. Just going to use the end prong of my comb to pull it on down trying not to pull out any of the curl. I tie the hair up with a band to keep the hair out of the eyes. You do not want the constant abrasion of the hair falling over the eyes to irritate the eyes and potentially cause um, dry eye. So keeping the hair tied up even though this breed can have shaggy falling forward hair. If you want to present them with their shaggy falling forward hair, do it at the time you want to present them. And then in between, I recommend keeping it tied up. So we're just scrunching in our conditioner just to bring out his curl not setting a part in his hair at all. Let's see if he's going to let me use the nail grinding tool today. He's here. Huh? He's here. Here we go, baby. Good Bowie. Good Bowie. Yeah, that's very nice. Good boy. keep these toenails, the better to get that nice upright foot. On the front. I'm 
feet again making sure that they're nice and neat sometimes when you're leaving a rustic look you have to go over this stuff a couple of times in order to get the desired effect Russian Belonka can have a bow in its hair. So we are going to make him a fancy little bow. It's important to burn the edges of your ribbon. We're going to make this a double layer bow. When working with the Russian Belonka or any purebred dog, you should familiarize yourself with the standard of the breed before grooming it. The Russian Belonka should have curly or at the very least wavy hair. So we did not blow dry him as we would the average drop coat dog. We want him to have a rustic looking appearance I call it controlled chaos with coats like that. I'm wrapping my band around three times. And I got a band that closely matched the color of my ribbon because I want this to be an extra fancy bow. We're going to put some bling on this bow. So I am using rhinestones. I'm going to cut these tiny ones in strips of four and I am going to make two strips of four because I do want this to have a little extra bling. I am going to cut three eighths inch ribbon, burn both ends into a small piece. And I am going to put two bands on this bow, just in case one breaks. He will not be wearing this bow today. We are going to save this bow for a dog show he's entered in. Gluing this right to the back of the bow with my bands set straight up and down. Now I'm going to put a strip of glue right over the band on the front. Attach both sets of rhinestones right up the middle. Get them set in there looking really nice and straight. We want this to be a really professional looking bow. I got a little bit of glue on top of that rhinestone, so I'm going to get that off by burning it. I'm 
typically show bows are hand sewn. I did not hand sew his. These bows are typically hardened. So I'm going to take knitting needles and slide them into the bow. For this dog's bow, I used nine millimeter knitting needles and 6.5 millimeter knitting needles. Now to harden the bow, I prefer Grand Finale hairspray. I spray it onto the bow. I find that this hairspray stiffens the best. I get the bow nicely saturated and you can let these sit up overnight or you can put them under the blow dryer on hot for a few minutes and stiffen them. I've only got a few minutes to get this dog done so we're going to go ahead and put these under the blow dryer. And now we'll just let this sit up until it's time for him to go home. And then I will just remove the dowels or the knitting needles out for the bow to retain its shape. Let's see how his show bow came out. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss a single upload. Please share this video wherever you can, and we'll see you next time, guys. Bye.